Assalamu alaikum and good day whatever time of day it is. Today we are going to be doing a short presentation on the first stage of structural grammar as a modern subject of linguistics for MA linguistics. In last lecture we mentioned the traditional grammar and how philosophy controlled on the ideas of linguistic aspects. Also we mentioned the contributions by some philosophers like Plato, Aristotle and Sir William Jones to language in this period. Today I would like to talk about structural grammar of English. The growth of modern linguistics started from the end of 18th century to the present day. De Saussure is the founder of modern structural linguistics and he was a lecturer in Geneva University. His early work was philology. In the 19th century, linguists were interested in historical linguistics diachronic studies. In the 20th century, the emphasis shifted to synchronic studies. The Saussure's central ideas concerning the study of language were expressed in the form of pairs of concept dichotomies. Two main approaches to language study, one European, one American, and to, to form the modern subject of linguistics. The first arises out of the aims and methods of 19th century comparative philology, with its focus on written records and its interest in historical analysis and interpretation. The beginning of the 20th century saw a sharp change of emphasis with the study of the principles governing the structure of living language being introduced by Genevian linguist Fernand de Saussure. His early work was in philology, but he is mainly remembered for his Theoretical ideas are summarized in the course in general linguistics, which is widely held to be the foundation of the modern subject. The second approach arose from the interest of American anthropologists who were concerned to establish good description of American Indian languages and cultures before they disappeared. The most significant work which made use of the new field study method was that began by a small group of American anthropologists around the turn of the century. They wanted to bring Christianity to, be, to the American Indian tribes and to translate the Bible into as many tribal languages they could. So, according to the social languages, a system of relations. He defines language as an object that can be studied scientifically. He pointed out the structural nature of language, the fact that its elements are essentially interlinked. He compared language to the game of chess. It's the relationship of each chessman to to other chessmen, which is the essence of game, that is to say, the role of each chessman is dependent on the position of other chessmen on the board. Dichotomies can be illustrated as 1. Diachronic versus Synchronic In diachronic study, the sees language 
as a continually changing medium. In Sekranik's so approach, he sees it as a living existing as a state at a particular moment of time. In this view, it's always necessary to carry out some degree of synchronic work before making a diachronic study. That is to say, before we can say how a language has changed from state X to Y, we need to know something about X and Y. But in a synchronic analysis, there is no need to refer to history. Lang versus Foral Lang language system refers to an abstract knowledge of language means the totality of language. It represents the generalized system of rules and words, images stored in the minds of individuals or native speakers. Foral's language behavior refers to actual physical utterance. Its realization of language in speech. It refers to actual act of speaking on the part of person, dynamic social activity, and a particular time and place. Significant versus signify. The social recognized two sides to the study of meaning, but the relationship between the two sides is arbitrary. Arbitrary or arbitrariness means there is no logical connection between the concept, for example, the shape of this th thing and these sounds. Significant, the thing that signifies sound image and signify the thing signified concept he called the relationship between the two linguistic sign the sign is the basic unit of communication within a community language is seen as a system of science mean a sequence of science The last one, syntagmatic versus paradigmatic. A sentence is a sequence of signs, and each sign contributing something to the meaning of whole. When signs are seen as a linear sequence, the relationship between them is called syntagmatic. It indicates the historical relationship between linguistic elements forming linear sequences in the sentence as in. For example, in this sentence, the sentence here is a sequence of signs and each science related with the next or before and the after element by link to get the meaningful sentence. sign. When a sign is seen as contrasting with other signs in the language, the relationship is called paradigmatic or associative. It refers to the vertical relationship between linguistic signs that might occupy the same particle place in a given structure. The two dimensions of structure can be applied to phonology, vocabulary, and any other aspect of language. Each word in a language is in a pragmatic relationship with a whole set of alternatives. The result is a conception of language as a vast network of interrelated structures and the mutually defining entities a linguistic system. Thanks a lot for listening and good luck.